I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co, and today I'm unboxing Fantasy Series 1 from Blacklist Games. This is going to be an interesting conversation, or not. You see, this is, as usual, an unboxing and rambling. I have my coffee, my knife, all ready to go over here. We're going to be diving into these boxes in a second. I've learned, by the way, fun fact, I've learned I can... I shouldn't say this. I've learned that I can juggle these knives if I have three of them. I shouldn't throw it. I shouldn't have to. You can't, you can't say you can juggle without being willing to throw it after... There we go. You see, there, I can do it. I could. I, I, I did juggle these three of these on stream. They're not balanced well for juggling, which is why I'm very hesitant to do so. I could juggle. These are like, I, I did both juggle these knives and slightly cut myself while doing so. So both things are true. Either way, this is an unboxing and rambling. I will not be throwing this knife again throughout the course of this video. I will not. But this is an unboxing and rambling. As usual, if you're new to the channel, if you're new to these unboxings over here, that means I'm going to be talking about the Fantasy Series 1 from Blacklist Games and going over stuff, and then also just talking about whatever comes to mind. And in the case of Blacklist Games, that is an interesting conversation in and of itself. You see, Blacklist Games has had a tricky road behind them. Possibly ahead of them, hopefully just behind them. They are a company that... <sighs> Blacklist Games, how do we even go with this? So... This is the Fantasy Series 1. This is a bunch of miniatures. There's not a game here, although in theory, these are all usable within the Lasting Tales game system. I also have the Lurker pack that they have for uh, Alter Quest, which I still haven't played and probably should. But Fantasy Series 1 is, is Blacklist Games' attempt to dive into the miniatures shortly before the company started to uh, kind of publicly acknowledge that they have problems. And I use the term acknowledge because for a long time, people were like, we think there's problems, and they're like, you are all foolish, terrible people who are making things up. And there were indeed problems. This is box one with all the miniatures. We'll be going with these shortly, showing what we got over here. For the record, I am not keeping this. This is uh, being unboxed, going over this video over here, and then it's moving on to the next person, whoever that's going to be. We'll figure it out. Uh, but I, I don't... I shouldn't have backed it in the first place. Part of my justification, which holds true, is that, hey, it'll hold this value. It was a very, very cheap price point for the amount of miniature content you got, and I can easily sell it if I don't choose to use it. There were rumors that there was going to be a game system around the game, and I was like, great, I'll use that. The only problem is that was a miniatures game, which makes sense, it's got miniatures, but it was like a miniatures game, not like a board game. It was a miniatures game with like rulers and dice and all the things that, I mean, board games have dice, but using rulers to move, not my jam. I played Warhammer back in the day. That was enough for me. I don't need to dive back into it. So, back this game in the hope and the optimism that maybe I'd have a reason to use it, and if not, I could sell it for what I paid and get my money back or more for that and shouldn't be a problem. But since then, Lasting Tales has come out. It's a miniatures game. Don't need that. And these miniatures, as nice as they are, I have way too much stuff going on. So I'm just unboxing this uh, game over here for the sake of this video here. And then we'll be moving on to um, selling it. So we have Lasting Tales. We have uh, these lurkers over here or whatever they are. I have no idea if they are because this isn't the game. They're just miniatures. They might have a game relevance or appropriate, you know, whatever in the uh, other game system. But we'll never really know. Or, I guess you could know if you literally just look up the files. That's all you really need to do. And there's like five of those sculpts. A lot of these sculpts have multiples. This one over here, these spiders, I'm kind of inclined to pull them out by their antenna, but that's actually a weak spot, and you could break them that way. So, uh, don't do that. But, Lasting Tales, going back to this whole thing. So, Fantasy, Blacklist Games got into their... They, they, they did a bunch of games. They did Street Masters was their original claim to fame. They have Brook City as well, which did very well. Uh, this is all along with the Sailor Brothers who have their MDS, the modular deck building system or the modular deck system, or whatever it is. Uh, but that system over there was used for Brook City. It was used for Street Masters. It was used for Alter Quest. It was used for the superhero one that I can't remember right now. So used for a bunch of games. And these are, by the way, these are very reminiscent of the minis you see in Alter Quest. If you like those minis, you'll like these minis. If you don't like those minis, I don't think you'll like these minis. I think they're very comparable, very samey, which is, they're not bad, not by a long shot. They're pretty good. Not necessarily my go-to as far as, like, for me, Six Siege, or Mythic Games more specifically, that's a company whose miniatures I absolutely adore. Lots of companies whose miniatures I like, but Mythic has always had some of the best miniatures out there, although they also have their own problems as a company. There's a lot of companies, I'm telling you, the pandemic was not... COVID, the pandemic, all these things, whatever issues there were or weren't behind the scenes and crowdfunding, they certainly came to light when you slapped an extra giant bill on people's plates with all the things going on with freight and all that stuff. So, we have this guy over here, this little, uh, whatever, bat thing thingamajiggy, and I do like this warm, this warm thing over here, I do like it, very cool looking, very like, you know, look at the little detail, look at his face, look at his face, his face is adorable, but anyways, crowdfunding in general had their issues, Blacklist Games had issues going back to even Street Masters, 
where like pallets were going missing and there were issues. And I was very, um, I was very much a man of the faith back then. I don't mean Judaism. I just mean that I, I tend to be very much in the camp of, hey, unless there's actually a legitimate reason to say there's something going on, don't call foul every single time. And there's going to be a bunch of people down below who are like, but this was foul. Yes, this time it was, but more often than not, it isn't. There are plenty of times, plenty of times with so many companies where people cry foul and there's no real issue. Once in a while, if you cry foul enough times, you'll be right. And in the case of Blacklist Games, there were enough issues going on consistently that at a certain point it become it became a little bit it became a little bit problematic. Let's just go with that. But they finally acknowledged there were problems, they finally acknowledged that there were issues going on and reasons to be concerned and since then, they've been trying to uh, struggle and refigure things out as a company. And with a degree of good faith, we'll talk about that too. So, like, I don't think they're simply there to take or steal your money in any way, shape, or form. And my evidence for that is going to be the football one they had. They had, I can't remember what it's called, but they had a, a one of those fighting football-style games. And in that game, they basically funded to, like, 200k and they canceled the campaign. And they could have just taken people's money, but they wanted more funding. And so the whole reason there, if, they, if their goal is just to take people's money and run, then let's just take the money and run. But they didn't. They canceled the campaign. They were trying to be financially viable, sustainable as a company. They were trying to do the right thing as much as possible while juggling the practical reality and difficulty of running a business, of which there's a lot of that. Those last two miniatures I showed you, they're just one of those. There's going to be some single sculpts. Uh, these ones, they're both going to be uh, double sculpts or five sculpts, so I'll show you what they are. But anyways... So they, they clearly have been trying to actually make things work or make things right. It's just, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes you run a company and you sell things and you do your stuff. And especially if there's money coming in out of order of the money being spent, sometimes with the best of intentions, you end up in a hot spot. And I'm not saying there were or weren't the best of intentions. I couldn't possibly know. But I can say that they weren't just looking to take people's money or that football one, whatever it's called, they would have just taken people's money. So I think there's not necessarily the best of intentions, best of intentions, but I think there was good intent and problems along the way, and it's unfortunate, and is what it is. It is unfortunate. It's very unfortunate. You see, the Sailor Brothers, I assume related to this whole fiasco, uh, but perhaps not, like seem to have moved away from game design. And that's not cool. Like, I don't like the idea that anyone gets driven away from gaming, but I understand why they might have been. This is all conjecture on my part, but, like, listen, if you sit there and take, um pressure from a whole lot of people around things outside your control for a whole lot of time that is going to result in a definite degree of burnout around the industry that you're in which which sucks they make good games or well, at least they make good games the ones i've played i've played the uh fantasy flight ones the um the heroes of terranoth and war hammer quest the card game i think those are the two but Anyways, we have some more heroes over here, so let's go ahead and show you these guys. And we, even, we haven't even opened the, the other big box, which we will definitely do so shortly. But in the meantime, in the meantime, let's use this as an opportunity to talk about the fact that currently, Blacklist Games has a Street Fighter game. In fact, I can do this over here because it's within reach over here. Blacklist Games has a Street Fighter game coming out, but not really Blacklist Games. Okay, so just because I just spent like five minutes telling you about all these issues of Blacklist Games. Uh, this, in this case, the designer of the game, Blacklist Games, uh, sold the game to Colossus in some way. I don't know the exact details of the arrangement, but there's some arrangement with Colossus Games, and Colossus Games is taking on taking on all the actual fulfillment or issues there. And Colossus Games, unlike Blacklist Games, has no real history of, of, of anything to go by, any issues. They had, I think they had like one or two things back in the day, but those were minimal. They weren't like lack of deliveries. There were some slight frustrations. Colossus has a solid track record of delivering. I'm not worried about Street Fighter at all, which brings them the opportunity to take a good game. And it is a good game. I've played it. That's not true. I think it's a good game. I've played it. I should use the correct terminology. But anyways, uh, Street Fighter V, Blacklist Games is working with them to be able to deliver that and to be able to sell it in a way that people walk into it not being quite as concerned that they will never get their game. Which, if it was under the title Blacklist and Blacklist alone, people would understandably have that concern. It's like, so I think you're totally safe, just to be very clear in case there's no misunderstanding here, I think you are totally safe backing the Street Fighter game when it does go up on GameFound. This is not a guarantee, this is just my opinion. Because, again, it's Colossus. Colossus has a good track record. But anyways, past that, Blacklist Games, they have uh, Street Fighter over there, That they have that. I don't know what will happen with the uh, football game. That's one, like, I'd love to see Colossus pick that one up. That's one that I had a chance to play online. Never played it the physical prototype, they cancelled the game and all that stuff. But I had a chance to play that one online. 
really enjoyed it from the single play I had of the game, so hoping that one gets picked up by someone, whether Colossus or whoever. Last two miniatures in the box, and then we move on to the next box. This unboxing is going brilliantly. It's an entire conversation around Blacklist Games and the history of the company, and nothing to do with this game, but then again, these are just miniatures, so there's not a lot of games to talk about. There's really just showing you things and then talking about other stuff, so that's what you signed up for. This is an unboxing and rambling. Welcome to Board Game Co. We're a little crazy here. Crazier when Devin and Mega here. I at least have some semblance of maintaining the balance of lack of chaos. They're just full-on chaos. If you want to see the unboxing of Marvel Zombies, it's a good thing there's going to be a... When the Kickstarter... I told you it's a rambling. When the Kickstarter for Marvel Zombies shows up, I will be unboxing everything. All the stretch of the Wave 1, the Wave 2, all the stuff, and I'll be going over all of that, and I'll be doing that without Devin and Meg, he says optimistically to himself, wondering if Devin and Meg will actually be here when that shows up, and hoping that he can hide it fast enough that they don't actually try to be in that unboxing. I'd rather have my uh, seven-year-old, Tavi, in the unboxing. He's far less chaotic. Anyways, last two miniatures in the box over here. These guys over here, they look pretty cool. And that's what we have as far as box one. Now we have the lurker box. I think we'll do the lurker box, get that out of the way, before we do the big box, because the big box has the dragon. Probably should have told you at the beginning, there is indeed a dragon. Well, mm -hmm. that's Fantasy Series 1. 70 plastic miniatures for any fantasy adventure, possibly never to be seen again. Like, I don't know, are they gonna sell this? I have no clue. I don't know if they're gonna try to sell this in some way, whether they're gonna sell, I have no clue what's gonna happen. I don't know, like right now, the, pro the practical reality is Blacklist, they, first of all, they are to some extent making good on certain things. I say to some extent because I, like many of you, had to pay extra money to get this game. So some of the Fantasy Series 1 was delivered with no issues and fine. After that, it looks like Blacklist uh, ran out of money or funds or some way, to the point that Quartermaster Logistics, basically, eventually, after a whole lot of back and forth, they're like, we're going to allow people to pay to directly get their game. So people will pay for the game, people will pay the shipping on the game they already paid for and paid shipping on to get the game. Which sucks, it is what it is, but paying an extra 30 bucks to get something I already paid $100 for, the math works out. Assuming I could sell it for at least $30, math works out, and I can sell it for at least $30. But, past that. Now, the Lurker Pack... This I might keep, but I don't know if I care enough. I'm like, ugh. the whole Blacklist thing does not leave the most positive taste in my mouth as far as Alter Quest, which is a game I haven't gotten to yet. That part's on me. That's not their fault. But, although I guess the rule book you could argue is their fault. Alter Quest did not have the best rule book. This looks like miniatures. Okay, now I'm confused. Is the Lurker Pack? Oh. Oh. I'm older now. Okay. I understand this now. So... I think I understand this. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments down below. If I recall correctly, the Fantasy Series 1... Is this how it works? Maybe? I don't know anymore. The Fantasy Series 1 is a bunch of miniatures. These look like cards to be able to use those miniatures in Alter Quest. So you could use all these various miniatures that you just took a look at in the Alter Quest game. I think that's how it works. Because, I say that because these are the very exact same miniatures. Maybe you needed six in Alter Quest? I don't remember. I'm trying to remember the box of Alter Quest. I recall it being just five, but maybe it was six. I don't know. Either way, they have a full lurker pack of extra miniatures in case you need them, and you apparently could use these stuff in in black in Alter Quest, which I won't bother. I think there's enough variety in Alter Quest, and I do want to sell these. That unless Alter Quest was like the best game ever for me, Alter Quest is probably leaving. Not necessarily a problem. I have to I have to play Alter Quest, and I do plan on playing Alter Quest. It's just, I plan on playing a lot of things, and I don't always get to those things because I'm too busy doing videos where I proceed to talk about nothing that's actually in the game itself, but these are miniatures. Again, these are miniatures. is fine. Anyways, what else is going on with Blacklist? So that's the situation of Blacklist. Again, people leaving the company, uh, the company kind of being reduced to its bare minimum. I don't know who works there or how many people are there. I don't know at all. All I know is Blacklist at this point seems to be a small number of people, which might be one, and a bunch of IPs, intellectual properties, these games we're talking about over here, and then a conversation around what happens to those things next in some way, shape, or form. What actually happens next, we'll find out. But what I do know is that this, this is a whole lot of miniatures. Whoa, boy. Okay. Okay. There's a whole lot more miniatures in this box over here. Let's go ahead and start diving into them. I, I don't know if I... I did not anticipate how long this was going to be. I thought this was going to be a shorter video because I thought this was mostly the dragon. I forgot how much stretch goals there were. We're going to go ahead and show you them because this is, there are some cool ones here. So for example, just off the bat, the two that strike me as the coolest are these two from the ones that have multiple sculpts, that is. We haven't looked at the ones that don't. These both look pretty cool. We got like a little mech situation and like a little blue fiery hair person. 
Both of them look, look pretty cool. Yeah, I like them. Let's take a look at what else fun things we can take a look at. Let's see. We're going to show you little, these guys, these guys. These ones I kind of saw already. They're similar looking at least, but we do have little white crystallized dragon. We'll take a look at those guys. If we can focus, there you go. You see a little white crystallized dragon and another gargoyle type thing. All fun things over there. Then we have some of these over here, which we'll take a look at. We have a Timon and definitely not Pumba, but thing that Pumba probably eats. Or this is Pumba. Pumba and thing that Timon probably eats. So if we take a look over here, you can see that we have Pumba. And then we have little bugs with like a little situation. It's a little large for Timon possibly, but definitely compelling to some degree. Let's go ahead and put that back in here. We'll show you all the unique heroes shortly. Let's get through the basic sculpts soon because there's a whole lot to go through. So we're going fairly quick on this one. Also, I ran out of all the drama to talk about Blacklist Games. So what else do we talk about? What else do we talk about when we can't even talk about the game itself? Because you can't talk about the game itself because there's no game. I think we're down to unique sculpts now. Wow, there's a lot of unique sculpts here. So I'll show you the last non-unique sculpt. Here we go. Here's the last non-unique sculpt over there. And then we're going to show you all the various unique sculpts two at a time because we're just going to go fast through this. These are the various unique sculpts you'll find in your Blacklist and your Fantasy Series 1 stretch goals. Now, I believe this Fantasy Series 2, and I'm trying to remember if I backed that. I think I backed Fantasy Series 2. Alex, you have a problem. Again, the good news is I sell this stuff for more than I paid. That's not always true. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that, actually. So, selling games on Kickstarter. When I first started this channel, a big part of what I focused on was talking about games and Kickstarters the way I backed them, which was off of the mindset of... Will this game hold its value? If it's not for me, because I rotate my games quickly, if it's not for me, can I get my money back if I sell it? That's always been a big focus on that. And there's time there. There's always the time value of money. You have to factor in, are you actually going to take the time to sell it? Or are you just going to theoretically sell it, put it on the top of your Calyx, like about four games. I have like four or five games on the top of my Calyx. I have, I have an extra copy of Mosaic. I have, um, I have Hate. I have Black Rose Wars. I have a bunch of games on the top of my Calyx that I have to take the time to sell and have not done so. It'll happen eventually. Other games I sell, but some of them I just haven't taken the time to get around to. And so, yeah, there's always that aspect as well. But a big part of what I've always done is focused on does it make sense to back a game or not to back a game? In the case of both of these uh, fantasy series, my logic was, hey, if it works for me, it works for me. And if not, I can go ahead and get my money back. In the case of the fantasy series, that's very much been proven true based on the copies on eBay. They sell for well above what people paid for them because they may or may not ever be available again. And even if they are, they were a steal of a price based on how much they um, they cost, as evidenced by Blacklist Games not being able to actually like run the company successfully based on what they sold them for. Seemingly. That's conjecture. Take that with a grain of salt. Past that. Pass that over here. So we have these guys over here. We got two more in this box and then we're done. Not done, not box. We have a full nether tray and then a full nether tray below it. There's plenty to go through over here. So last two over here. So in general, that's always been my uh, logic to a degree. Now, as time has gone on, as I've gotten busier, I have had less and less time to sell things to the point that a lot of the things I sell, some things I sell myself, but a lot of things I sell through someone local who basically picks up the games, gives me half the money and takes the other half. That's great with a caveat. It means that it saves me time, which is great because I have no time. The, the nature of doing like 15 videos a week, streaming and having a whole game found job means I have no time. But it does mean that the conversation changes around some games. It means that I can't as casually back things that I would get my money back because if I'm getting half my money back, it's not the same thing anymore. So I've been a little stricter around what I back in general. I've had shelf control both between the amount of games that I always have coming in and between the fact that I'm no longer getting everything I paid for it. In some cases I do because the more expensive stuff I do sell myself because it's just easier at that point. That's why I mentioned I have a bunch of games on the top of a Callus Cubby that I haven't gotten around to selling just yet. So these are over here. These are cool. These are from the um, additional sculpts, the ones that have multiple sculpts. I like those ones. Those are not bad. Let's go and show you some more of these. There's a whole bunch of so, so many miniatures here. So many stuff. We got these guys over here, but I don't like it when my unboxings become like two hours long. I try to avoid that. In fact, there's only one game that I ever just gave up on unboxing it. I was like, this is too long. And I had my kid with me and that was Massive Darkness. I got into that and I got to a certain point and I was like, it's been an hour with my son next to me. I'm going to just go ahead and wrap this up and not go through all the expansions. But I generally try to avoid that. I want to do a full unboxing, but I want to do it at a speed in which you can see everything. We can have a conversation. We can talk about whatever. But that, if, like, if you want a detailed unboxing, I generally recommend my go-to recommendations for a detailed unboxing. I'll show you everything. This is the last uh, non-unique sculpt. It's going to be King of Average and Board Game Coffee. Both channels will give you a very heavily detailed unboxing of whatever games they're going through. Often big box heavy miniature games. 
and they do so incredibly well uh, with a very high eye for detail in their own different unique styles. So now we're going to the uh, the Hero single sculpts. So these are all the single sculpts in the box over here. Yeah, that's what we got as far as this. I just offer the rambling. That's that's the main compelling aspect of being here because you never know where the conversation will go. Where could the conversation go next? Marvel United. So I don't know when this video goes up. I do not, unfortunately, because I just have too many unboxings. I've done an unboxing of the current unboxings I have in the queue is I have the Hunter's AD. I have Descent, so I have the Hunter's AD, I have Descent, Legends of the Dark, whatever, in the queue. I think that's what I currently have, and then I have a few more that I could get around to filming at some point, but I haven't done so yet. Like, Petrichor, I kind of should unbox, but then again, that's more of a Euro. I don't know if I should bother. I should probably just put that into the big box. Whatever. There's a few games that I possibly could unbox if I so chose, but I haven't gotten around to them. But right now, the ones I have filmed are the Descent one and the Hunter's AD, and now this one. So I don't know the order that they go up, but... What I do know is that currently on the table behind me, the other things that I'm about to do is I'm about to dive into more Marvel United content. You may or may not have seen Marvel United content because I'm guessing this video goes up after the Marvel United Multiverse video, the uh, Kickstarter goes up. So Marvel United Multiverse, they're jumping in for season three effectively, giving you more Marvel United. And for the record, I love Marvel United. You do not need more Marvel United. You don't, you absolutely do not. There's so much Marvel United content out there that it's insane and it's a lot of money and you don't need it. And I did a video once about why I spent $600 in Marvel United, and I stand by that video, but I also think that you probably shouldn't spend $600 in Marvel United, and I think that definitely you shouldn't spend $600 plus whatever the cost of this Kickstarter is. I think you should selectively choose the content that speaks to you, and there's a lot of content out there. I do think Marvel United is fantastic while being light. Take that into account. That's not the conversation. The conversation we should have, though, is that after I do this video, the two videos I'm doing, probably wearing the same shirt if you want to check for posterity and all that. Uh, the two videos I'll be doing after this are going to be a solo playthrough of the new Marvel United content with the new solo rules. A multiverse introduces some new solo rules in case you're interested, and I'll be diving into, uh, for the first time, that scenario. Or not really scenario, those rules, I should say. And then after that, I'll be going ahead and playing it one more time regular, probably, because I've only played it once so far. So I'll be playing it Marvel United regular, playing it uh, the solo rules, and then diving into like another boss or two. And then from there, probably doing a review or review slash preview. It's going to be a review, effectively. I mean, just covering the changes and the highlights. So it's like it's one of those weird situations. And this is in general a weird situation when you're a content creator, which is when do you we need to review something? Like if I get like four exit games, I need to review all of them. Do you really need the nuanced opinion of this exit game being better than that exit game? Maybe, I don't know. It feels like duplicate content at a certain point. In the case of Marvel United though, I've already reviewed the game. I already have made my opinion clear in multiple videos and conversations, but it's still worth putting up a, an opinion piece right about now because right about now is when the Kickstarter is. So there is that factor in conversation on the table. But I'll basically be saying, hey, I like Marvel United. Check out my review over here. And also, here's the new changes and updated opinions and all those things of the content. And I have dived into more Marvel United content since doing my review. I've now played through Infinity Wars. I've played through uh, Sinister Six. I've played with a whole lot more characters since my original review. And bosses, because the characters don't really matter. But that's what I'll we'll be doing after this. And now we have the, um, we have, I don't get it. Is there two Lurker Packs? Is the Lurker Pack extra? I don't understand. Was buying the Lurker Pack a mistake? Did I make a mistake? Because I see cards here that seem like they're from the Lurker Pack. But I think like, I paid for those separately. So we'll do the Dragon last, obviously. And we'll do the Troll second last, because why not? And we'll do the colored ones of these, because why not? But let's go ahead and show you what we have here. These I should show you one at a time. They're cool enough to do that. Look at this guy. Look at this guy over here. Look at this guy. They're pretty cool. Look at the little mushroom on his head. Little Mushroom Man's head's adorable. These are pretty solid miniatures. I just remember from, from Alter Quest, and again, very much the same style, they are pretty solid, but they're not my go-to. They're good. If I was rating these on a five-point scale, these would be a four to five. I like them. I have no real complaints. No textured bases, which is a thing we definitely like to see, but they're pretty solid. But they don't, like, they don't make my heart sing, if that makes sense. And if you're like, which miniatures do make your heart sing? Well, first of all, Six Siege. Uh, the Primal miniatures were pretty amazing. A Wild Ascent has some extra miniatures. Uh, what else is there? There's got to be more miniatures that I can think of. There's a lot of games out there, and a lot of them with excellent miniatures that really do make my heart sing. Uh, a lot of Awakened Realms, like I would say, um, I would say six, the Mythic Games has generally, not all their games, but they've generally been a 5 out of 5 in the miniatures. I would say Awakened Realms are probably a 4.5 out of 5. 
Uh, come on is case by case, actually. Come on is very depends on the game. I would say they're generally between a 4.5 and a 5 as far as their miniatures go, but it is case by case. We got some nice little colored ones over here. I do like the colored ones. Then again, it's something that come on is doing in general a little more often. We got this little tornado guy. We got this water demon situation. These are nice and fun to look at. I like the general color scheme. We have one more colored one, and then we have the giant dragon, and then we'll be calling it. In fact, I may have missed this guy. I may have done this one. If I did, I apologize, but I think I missed him. Little giant troll with the cl club over there. He's been oiling up. You can see his skin's nice and shiny. And then this guy who does not show up well on camera because orange and red never show up well on camera. And then lastly, we have the, uh, the main attraction, the giant dragon. That's what we have over here. I'm going to show the top camera. This is the giant dragon. Very cool looking. Not like the same as the uh, Joan of Arc giant dragon, if you've ever seen that bad boy. The Joan of Arc giant, giant dragon is one of the coolest miniatures I've ever seen, uh, in terms of just board games at least. It's it's huge, it's incredible. I wanted to like Joan of Arc just so I could keep that dragon. But I never played Joan of Arc, and like these, I tend to get rid of things if I'm not actually playing them as an actual game. I tend to. There might be exceptions. But generally, I try to be conservative because my space, I do not have enough space. These are, to me, they're the same level as Gloomhaven and Frosted miniatures. Solid 4 to 5. No complaints. They look good, but they don't spark joy. They don't spark joy. I wonder if you are someone who thinks that the uh, Gloomhaven and Frosted miniatures do spark joy. I'm curious about that because I don't know if I've ever heard anyone like talking about them in a... They're good. They do the job. And these, these are good. They do the job. Just the, the joy thing. I like when things spark joy. I like I like miniatures. I like board games. I like all kinds of stuff. But with that said, we made decent time in this. This is Fantasy Series 1. The unboxing. I don't know why I'm putting this knife in my pocket. I already have a knife in my pocket. That's how I was able to juggle because I have three of them. This is the Fantasy Series 1 from Blacklist Games. This is your miniature unboxing situation. Now time to go ahead and sell it and um, go play a different game. Marvel United, specifically, based on how this conversation went. In any case, and until next time, I appreciate all of you. Thanks so much for being here. And until that, words. Thanks so much for being here. And as always, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And I hope you have a good one.